Welcome back to the Milkweed and Monarch Project. In this episode, we will first watch the monarch caterpillar transform into a chrysalis, and then again from a chrysalis into a butterfly. Once the caterpillar reaches the fifth and final instar, it will begin to wander away from the milkweed plant, looking for a safe place to begin its next transformation. In nature, the monarch caterpillar can wander as far as 30 feet from its original food source. Raising monarchs in cages doesn't offer this option, so the caterpillars usually move to the top of the cage. When the monarch caterpillar finds its perfect spot, it creates a silk pad. The silk is made from the caterpillar's spinneret, a small organ located beneath its mouth. After the silk pad is complete, the caterpillar attaches itself and hangs in a J shape for around 24 hours. At the end of this period, it will shed its skin one final time in a process known as pupation. During the caterpillar's final shed, the pupa emerges. It will appear bright green with grooves at first until the chrysalis hardens over the next 24 hours. After it hardens, the chrysalis will be smooth and instead of bright green, it will be a light green with gold and black patterning around the top. The monarch will remain in the chrysalis phase for 8 to 15 days. When the chrysalis darkens to black, the monarch will emerge within 24 to 48 hours. We have our chrysalises. We have eight of them. Some of them are ready to hatch into butterflies. Others are not. Right back here, there, this chrysalis is getting ready to turn in to a butterfly. It will turn into a butterfly in maybe a few hours or maybe tomorrow. This one right here will take a few will take a few days because it just chrysalis. When the butterfly is close to coming out, the chrysalis may be dark orange or purple because of the butterfly's wings. This chrysalis is getting trapped up inside of this cage now because it will do much better in here. When it comes out, it will not, it will not have a tiny space to crawl, crawl around and stuff. It'll have a large space. When the monarch first emerges, or ecloses, its abdomen appears large while its wings appear small and crumpled. The abdomen is filled with fluid, which the monarch then pumps through its wings to make them expand. About 30 minutes after it emerges, the monarch will release a reddish fluid, which you might see at the bottom of the cage. This might seem alarming, but it is totally normal. However, if you happen to notice your butterfly does not fill its wings properly, it is possible that it might have a parasite called OE. It is recommended that if you raise monarchs, you test adult butterflies for OE and keep an eye out for any other diseases or parasites that monarchs are prone to. This butterfly is going to be released soon. First, though, it needs to dry its wings. Be careful not to touch a butterfly's wings because they have small feathers that could get messed up. Then they can't fly. This is our first butterfly. Soon he's going to fly away and do whatever he wants. It will take around one to four hours for the monarch's wings to dry. At that time, the monarch can be released, though it is often recommended that you wait at least 24 hours so that the monarch can finish maturing and preparing for longer flights. The monarch will not need to eat until it has been out of the chrysalis for 48 hours. When it is time to release, choose a sunny day over 60 degrees and release at least an hour before sunset. Peak migration time in Ann Arbor is around mid-September. Monarchs emerging around this time do not reproduce and instead focus on eating nectar for their migration and overwintering in central Mexico. These super generation monarchs will stay at their overwintering site until March, the following spring, and lay eggs on their journey north to begin the cycle anew. Our next and final episode will cover seed saving and preparing for the season next year.